Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'm very happy that you're with me here again. We are looking at two small tiny features today because the main features like the cycles baking and uh, split normals and, um, and further improved smoke support like a dedicated node for the smoke uh, shader and something like this is being developed at the moment so there are no news here um, oh i just i just i'm just seeing that the uh, split normals are just committed to trunk so we'll have that in the next episode i think um, but first let's start with something personal and that will be the um, gooseberry project project gooseberry who hasn't heard of it? Yeah, it's quite a hype, but it's a serious hype and it's important. It's very important for Blender. Project Gooseberry is all about making a feature length film, a film that is exactly as long as you would expect when you are watching a film in your movie theater. But it's done by 12 studios all around the world and exclusively using Blender and the video sequence editor for example so the um, project is very ambitious that is for true that is absolutely true but it's done by serious people like this one the uh, director the Mathieu Ouvray or by Tom Rosendahl that is who's uh, uh, coordinating that project again and you're asking for sure why is that so important for Blender. We are developing anyway, so why do we need money? Why do we need Project Gooseberry? And I'd like to tell you this from a developer's perspective. When you are developing for Blender, then you often need a use case for your code. So you can't sit down and say, okay, I develop anything. Uh, it will be useful for some of uh, the artists. Most of the time, there is an artist that say who says, okay, I need this and this and I can't get to it. So why do, don't we have this feature? And that is exactly where it's uh, very, very important for the developer because then he has someone that is, um, that is requesting a new feature and you could uh, develop it exactly as this guy needs it. And when you are developing such features and many guys are, are requesting, then Blender is improving in, uh, extensively. So that is really important to have a project for uh, development, for further development. And Project Gooseberry is uh, important because we got so many studios. I think that's something on the project pitch page so many studios and those studios are um, all bringing in their own different style like you can see here so that's a fairly different style than this one or this one and so or this one even more and so all those uh, studios are having different um, needs and with different needs we need to develop different things and so it's very important that we got so many different studios all around the world and the question is now how could you help and that is done by pledges by donations or by becoming a cloud member and when you are a cloud member then you got several a uh, pledging is uh, uh, just let me just let me say that pledging is very easy. Just pledge via PayPal, credit card or something else. And when you only can pledge one euro or two dollars or whatever, then pledge it. It's uh, helping us to make this movie and to make all, all Blender tools better. So please do that. And um, the thing is, when you like to have a Blender Cloud membership, then you really get something back and that is huge. And I'd like to show you in this short episode what you are getting back. And that is here, the Blender Cloud. So you're seeing that we got 
several training DVDs already here and there are more to come. Come All Blender Foundation produced uh, training DVDs are coming into the cloud. So you could just easily hit uh, the Venom Slab from uh, Pablo Vasquez and download all the assets, all the videos, look at all the videos online and um, just uh, just use them in your own projects. But furthermore, there are all the open movies there, like the Kevin Enders movie or the Tears of Steel, Sintel, and soon the Kevin Enders 2. Oh no, that is the Kevin Enders 2, I think. Yeah, that's the Kevin Enders 2 and all other feature films, uh, all other <laughs> open movies that uh, the Blender Foundation produced. And even already the trailer for the uh, Gooseberry project is there, like this uh, this caterpillar, this dragon or this wolf shot. And you could inspect all those assets, download all those assets and look at what those different studios did. And that is so helpful for developing yourself further. And when they are producing the Gooseberry movie, then you will gradually uh, see all those um, files appear that are used to produce it. So it's uh, really helpful. It's a very cool way of uh, looking at a production. And I think that this will help uh, Im immediately to become a better artist yourself. So that is a cool thing, the Blender Cloud. And I think uh, despite the fact that I most of the time don't uh, like the cloud thing and the cloud idea that this cloud is really helpful. And so that is my final word. Please batch us, uh, back, uh, back us up, uh, donate, please pledge, please uh, give us all your support you could afford. And uh, if you have no money or something else, then share this video, share this article, share the uh, URL, help us to make this happen because that's really important for the Blender Foundation and for all you users out there. So that was my personal statement. And now we are looking at those two features I promised you. So let's look at the first feature. First, let me delete this particle system that I accidentally um, in, uh, edit. And then let's look at the resize texture and all other preview window feature. That is here, for example. And it's this preview window here. Earlier, you just uh, had the opportunity to uh, scale all the controls and then it would uh, it would scale with it but uh, when you don't want it to scale the controls then it would stay the same size but now we get a little track uh, track icon here and when we track that then it will track along and scale along and this is uh, possible in all other widgets too so in the UV image editor, for example, um, like there, we have this one and this one and this one. All preview windows are now draggable and scalable easily. So that is the first feature already, and I think that's very handy. The next one is the UV node for cycles. So let's switch again to the um, to the compositor or the node editor by hitting Shift F3. That's a shortcut for that. And now let's use the nodes, but not the Blender internal nodes, the cycles render nodes. Use nodes. Let us just create a new material so it's easier. And then we we have a new UV map uh, node here, and this UV map node can be fed to every other node where you earlier used the attribute nodes. When you got a UV map, for example, UV, then 
there is our UV map. And when you got this map, then you would normally just enter it here and use it. And now, because many were missing the, um, the UV map node, we got a dedicated node for that. It's exactly working exactly the same as the attribute node before, but it makes it more clear that you're using an UV map now. So that's exactly the same, and I think that's helpful too. So this was it already for this sneak peek. I, th I know that was a very small one, but we will see much more in the future in this release. And I hope that I'll see you on Google+, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on all our other channels. So please subscribe and share this video to make those features well known and to bring Gooseberry a little bit more attention. And I hope that you enjoyed it. We'll see us next time. Keep on blending. Bye.